Hello, my friends, I'm Debbie Daly, and coming up is a yin yoga practice for the whole body with a little bit of yang yoga mixed in, not too much, and you won't need any special yoga props for this, just a couple of things that you probably have lying around, a blanket and a strap. So any kind of blanket or even a towel that you can roll up to lie back over, and a strap, so a belt, a dog leash, a robe belt, anything like that. So go ahead and get ready and I will see you in a moment. I've got this edge that's what, about three feet long. And so get your blanket into something that you can start rolling from something about two and a half, three feet long. And then a nice tight roll is what we're going for. A rolled yoga mat also serves this purpose. We're gonna lie back over it for the upper back and start out with this upper back stretch. So taking that roll under your shoulder blades, like so, like not under the lower back is important. It's not here, it's up here. Really just think about getting it at the back of your heart, behind your heart. And then the tops of the shoulders dip down. The tops of the shoulders come to the earth the arms come out over top of the roll rather than down so that we get this opening of the thoracic spine, which is the part of your spine connected to your ribs. And we'll rest here for three minutes to begin. So once you find yourself in this position, you'll say, what do I want to do with my legs? Well, that's up to you. You can have them bent like this. You could have them opened out like a butterfly, soles of the feet together. You could have them straight ahead with the legs closer together or wider apart. And enjoying a nice heart opener. Do what you can to lengthen the back of your neck also so that the chin is coming down toward the chest a bit. If it's hard to do that, it might be that your roll is too large. And settling in with this first posture Noticing what's present with the body today. Noticing what's present with the breath today. And now slowly releasing. So you'll bend your knees and roll slowly over to the side. 
and then make your way up off of your roll right up into a sitting position for butterfly pose. And so sitting with the soles of your feet together, you might have the blanket folded up to come underneath of your seat, or you can do it without a blanket if you prefer. And so three minutes here in Butterfly. So as we take the butterfly pose, having the legs farther in front of you or closer back is up to you. If you bring them closer back, you might feel it more in the legs. If you take them farther forward, you might feel it more in the spine as you relax forward. And so letting the spine relax here is important. The shoulders soften, the head can relax. Not really going for a straight spine, but instead just a soft, a soft back. And now slowly release, unfurl the spine, come upright and all the way down onto your back for a nice one minute rest on the back. Taking this time on the back to feel the effects of the pose. So any comfortable position on your back. Give yourself permission to spread out, to take up as much space on the ground as you'd like. Give yourself permission to take this time and this space to care for yourself, to nurture this body, to nurture this being, to receive and accept nurturance from the earth, from the earth below you.
And now bending the knees, draw them in towards your chest and wrap the arms around the legs. And you can clasp the fingers if it works for you or just one hand on each knee and rock side to side, feeling your back. Let it now come back to center and coming into cradle pose. So taking your right knee in and clasp the hands around the right knee as you extend your left leg forward. So lengthening the back of the neck and let the arms be active if you want to. Um, you can kind of engage the arms a bit, drawing the leg a little more in. But if the, the leg itself, we want to keep it relaxed. So there's no need to flex the foot or try and do any particular action with the leg there. Just instead, let it relax and draw it in. So this way we can feel the spine stretching. And the more you pull that leg in, the more you might feel that stretch of the spine, anywhere from your tailbone all the way up through your lower back, middle back, and maybe even up into the back of the neck. Good, and now take an inhaling breath into your belly and lifting up to engage the abs, bring your forehead toward your knee. And with your inhale, release your head back down, just tap the back of the head to the ground and lift up again. And again, tap the head down, lifting up third time. And tap the head back down. And now last time, lifting up, staying this time, and reaching down to hold the bottom of your foot, one-legged happy baby pose. Bring the head back down onto the ground. You might be holding the outside or the inside of the foot. Either way is fine. And if it doesn't work to hold your foot, you can do the knee instead and open the knee out to the side. One minute here. And now releasing this leg and taking the foot on top of your left knee, so right foot on top of the left knee, coming into a spinal twist. So first, skew your hips to the right a few inches and then let this knee come over to the left side. So your left hand comes on the outside of the leg and then you can scoot your hips around enough so that you get the weight all the way onto the outside of your left hip and reach your right arm back. Your knee may or may not come all the way to the ground, and if it doesn't, that's fine. We'll hold here for three minutes. And if you want some support, if it feels uncomfortable with the leg not hitting the ground, then you could have a pillow or a block or whatever is available underneath your knee and your shin and your foot. Breathing into the twist of the spine. 
That's the primary action of this pose, is twisting the spine. And what the legs and the arms are doing are just kind of tools. They're not the main thing of the pose. The main thing of the pose is what's happening between the hips and the shoulders. The twist of the spine. And releasing, bring it back to the center. And one more thing on this side, kind of an epic one-sided sequence that we'll do with the strap. The strap or the belt comes up around the foot and the leg straight up for a hamstring stretch. You can have one part of the strap in each hand like this, or you could have one hand holding both parts of the strap up to you. Three minutes once again. And so the angle of the leg will be different for everyone. Mine happens to go sort of straight up, but that's not really what it has to do. You, you might be more here, or you might be more over the head. If you're more flexy in this direction, your leg might be way up over there. Just finding the stretch in your hamstrings that feels like you're targeting the area, getting a stretch here, but also, so you're targeting the area, getting a stretch here, but also, um, also just having a stretch that you can breathe into. Softening into the shape. And now for the last minute here, take the leg out to the side. So both parts of the strap come into your right hand and open the leg out. And you can experiment here with whether the toes angle toward the ground or not. See what feels good. 
Give yourself permission to explore. And release, the leg comes back up to the center. And now, letting the leg come down, put your strap aside and just rest on your back after all that goodness on the first side. Take one minute of rest here before we change to the second side. Notice how your right leg feels, the whole right side of the body after twisting, stretching the leg. Feel your breath. And taking both knees into the chest now, wrapping the arms around the legs, gently rock side to side. And take your right leg straight out so you're clasping the hands around the left knee this time. Starting the sequence on the second side, holding the knee, hugging it in, let the foot and the leg relax. Breathing into your back body. And take an inhaling breath all the way into the back body. With the exhale, lift your head up toward your knee, engaging the abs. And release your head back down. And a second time, lift. And release down. Third lift. And back down. And last time, lift up, stay up, reach down, hold the bottom of the foot, one-legged happy baby pose, one minute. Make it work for you. Give yourself permission to modify any of these postures. It's not about getting the pose right. It's about doing what feels good, getting the target area of the pose. Here it's the spine, the left side of the spine, the hip on the left side. And giving yourself permission to take care of this body. And now releasing, take this left foot on top of the right knee and cross it over into the twist. Again, you can bump the hips to the left first to help yourself get into the twist. And you wanna make sure you feel like you're too much in a back bend. So keep on bumping that right hip under you till you feel like you're 
just more in a twist rather than a back bending position. You reach your left arm out to the side, you take your right hand onto your knee and breathe. Taking the leg back up to the center and finding the strap, placing the strap around your right foot or your left foot and taking the left foot up into the air with the strap, holding it in whatever kind of clasp feels right for you. And feeling that stretch into the hamstrings, making sure it's something that you can breathe into. What's happening in the back of your left leg? Easing up if it's too intense.
And now opening the leg out to the left side. So both parts of the strap in the left hand. And slowly bring the leg back up and take the strap off and let the leg float down, coming into another rest of one minute. Give yourself permission to spread out, to sprawl out, so that the energy can move. Whatever is happening as a result of these last postures, What's happening in the body? How can the energy move more freely through my shoulders, through my hips, through my spine? Feel your arms and your legs. Feel these hands, feel these feet. Feel the ground beneath you. And bending the knees, draw them in. Hug the arms around the legs. Lift your head up towards your knees, squeezing into a ball. And release your head back down. So go ahead and roll over onto one side, coming up to hands and knees, and then taking dragon pose. So dragon pose with the right leg forward. And your hands can be in a number of places. So the choices here, you could have the hands on either side of the leg, which is kind of our standard dragon pose, or they can be both on the inside of the leg or some kind of a hybrid where the elbow comes on the knee and one hand is here. So TP arms, TP hands like this might give you a little more height, a yoga block under the hand if you like, or you can be flat on the hand. Some people also like to be do the gecko version of the pose to be down on the elbows. So three minutes here, you can find your version, fish around for what feels right. And one tip is to maybe experiment with letting this hand be way out to the side. So it maybe if you're on a yoga mat, it might come off the yoga mat and see how that feels. The target area of dragon pose is this front of the thigh and over the front of the hip. So whatever you're doing, making sure that you're getting some kind of stretch there in the front of the thigh and the front of the hip on your left side. In yin yoga, some poses like this one involve one part of the body being a little more active, doing a little more yang, so that another part of the body can release and relax 
into the nice long fascia stretch. So in this case, my arm is holding me up and I'm gonna allow my elbow to lock out so that I can just rest in the bones as much as I can. And the upper body has to hold itself up, the spine a bit to get this stretch in the leg. I need to lift in the front body. But then the feeling in the back of the leg, pretty much from my waist down, is one of sinking in, dropping in, releasing and relaxing. And slowly releasing. And now taking a one minute transition in plank pose, forearm plank pose. So coming on to elbows and forearms, palms can be clasped, hands can be clasped or palms down. And one minute here to work the core into a little bit of heat to get the body into some kind of a more muscular position in between our two sides of the dragon pose. So if one minute feels like too long, then maybe you're going to um, rest in between. You can just come on down and rest whenever you need to and then come back into the plank. Shift your weight forward and back side to side. If you do that, it'll make it easier to hold the pose, easier to stay here rather than holding the same static position. And that's one minute. So releasing and taking it into the second side of dragon pose. So we had the right leg forward. This time we'll have the left leg forward and three minutes.
And slowly releasing and now step it back into downward dog. Walk your legs in downward dog, bending one leg at a time. Notice what you feel in the hips. Notice the right hip, left hip, right thigh and quads. Now we'll drop it down into child's pose, taking a one minute rest here. And coming up and now finding yourself a place on a wall. So if you don't have a convenient wall, you could use the edge of a bed or a sofa. We're going to come into legs up the wall pose. So best way to get into it is to scoot your booty all the way up to the wall and then come into it sideways, swinging the legs up. One minute here to soften into your spine, to let the backs of the legs gently lengthen and to feel this whole line from the back of the heels up the back of the legs and the back of the torso all the way up to the back of the neck and the back of the skull. And now starting to bend your knees to prepare for figure four pose at the wall. So you'll take your right ankle over your left knee. So your left knee is bent. And for me, it's kind of hard to get into this unless I move farther away from the wall. So most people need to scoot away from the wall some amount. And you'll find out how much, you don't wanna come away from the wall so much that you lose the stretch. So the stretch is here in the right buttocks. That's the main area that we're stretching. And so you can scoot farther away until it feels like you've got that stretch still, like you're able to get your legs in the position. And once you get here, you can fine tune the pose by taking the right ankle over the left knee farther so the knees come closer together or the opposite farther apart. See what gives you the right sensation. And then maybe also exploring the whole unit of the legs moving left or right. There's not any ideal center position here. It's just about targeting the stretch into the right area, into the, into the right outer hip and buttocks.
and staying connected to your breath. Breathing into the place where you feel the sensation. and releasing and slowly change sides right foot on the wall left ankle over the knee and fine-tuning your positioning so that you target the stretch into the left buttocks left outer hip maybe wider between the knees maybe narrower maybe the whole unit of the legs moving to one side or the other a bit. Some people like to flex the foot here and you're welcome to do that if it helps you but you don't have to do it. Mostly people who like to do it, if, if there's any feeling of instability in the knee or the possibility of injury, then sometimes flexing the foot can help with relieving that feeling of instability. But if you don't feel that and want to just relax the leg, um, then that's fine as well. And slowly releasing. And now coming all the way back to the wall. So you have to do something like a shimmy <laughs> or a shuffle <laughs> and get your sitting bones back to the wall and then let the legs come up the wall. Now, you don't have to have sitting bones right against the wall. If you're tighter in the hamstrings or your legs don't bend too much in this direction, then it's fine to have a few inches or even a foot or more between your body and the wall. So we'll finish the practice here, coming into a relaxation position on the back. Make yourself comfortable. Arms can be sprawled out to the sides in a T or even up over your head. Make sure your head is comfortable. Now 
You can let your chin come down towards your chest. And enjoy the gravity doing the opposite thing than usual on the legs. So stagnation in the legs can just start to drain out here as you gently feel the length of your spine, especially feeling the lower back here, which has gotten a lot of love and attention and care in this practice. And the whole spine from the tailbone up to the neck and the skull. In this practice, we've given attention to all of the major myofascial regions of the body where there is a lot of fascia, particularly lower back, hips, lower spine, pelvis. And now you can begin to direct the breath to these areas. Filling the bowl of the pelvis with your breath. And feeling the breath spread around throughout the lower back, the belly. Softening the thighs. And for one more minute, feeling every breath that your body breathes. Feeling every inhale. Feeling the whole exhale. And now starting to bend the knees very slowly, making your way over onto one side and just pause when you roll over to the side, resting, breathing here. 
Feel your breath here. And slowly push up. Let your head come up last. So round the spine on the way up, coming up into a sitting position. And sit with your spine up tall. Close your eyes. Noticing the space inside. Noticing the energy in the body and the energy around the spinal column. And sitting with and enjoying this energy. Enjoying this space. And now chanting OM together three times, place your palms together in front of your heart and inhale. That's our practice. Thank you so much for joining today. Namaste. Well, my friend, I very much hope you benefited from this practice. Please do leave me a note in the comments. I would love to hear what your favorite pose from this practice was. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.